welcome to episode 136. Today we're talking about customer appreciation events. Yep. Looks like it's working this time. <laughs> Good. So I'm Paula Williams. I'm John Williams. And we are ABCI, and ABCI's mission is... To help all you ladies and gentlemen out there in the aviation world sell more products and services. Absolutely. So this is one of the most popular articles on our website. And I think, you know, there's a lot of material about there out there about marketing and about aviation marketing. But uh, there is not a lot of material on the web about customer appreciation events, especially in the aviation industry. And there should be. And there should be. And uh, we're going to talk about why there should be and why just about everybody in the aviation industry should be doing some kind of customer appreciation event, right? Exactly. Okay. Not just the big ones, right? Big ones meaning big events or big companies? Big companies. (laughs) People think only the big companies do this and and really everybody should be doing something. Um, So why? Why should we be doing this? Why not? Because they're fun. No. Um, Actually, they are one of our favorite things to do. But uh, also, there are some really practical reasons to to do this. Just because you have a customer doesn't mean they will always be a customer. You need to appreciate them. Yes, you do. And there's no better way than to do that uh, in person, if you can, uh, in a way that uh, really acknowledges the fact that you understand they've made an investment with you, you value your relationship with them, um, and, and so on. Uh, we have talked about how important phase three is, right, uh, in a lot of our other podcasts and things like that. So, um, and we'll talk about this again in, in just a minute, but phase one being advertising and uh, prospecting, and everybody focuses all of their attention on that. Two being building credibility and closing, and then three being what do you do after the sale to get more uh, referrals, resales, recaptures. We're going to re- define phase three just as a review for uh, yeah those that may not have seen that. We have a slide about that later, but uh, you know, just to to really quickly recap, <clears throat> phase three is the most profitable uh, marketing investments that you can make. Uh, so, just about any dollar that you invest in keeping a current customer happy <laughs> uh, will repay itself more quickly than dollars that you invest in advertising or or prospecting. we've proven that to ourselves many times. Including this morning. (laughs) True. We we actually got a call from from someone who had talked with a uh, person that we had done business with, or actually we didn't even do business with them, but we had talked with six years ago and had stayed in contact with, and he's a a pilot and, you know, involved in a number of different businesses and things like that. And he's referred business to us at least twice that I know of in the last six years. Mm -hmm. So, you know, keeping that network and keeping people engaged and and involved with us is is really, really important. Uh, And I think that's true of just about anybody in the aviation industry. Most of the brokers, yeah. Brokers in particular, I think, get 50% or more of their business from previous customers. And people say, well, you know, how do I get more referrals? You, you, it don't, doesn't just happen by accident. No, it doesn't. Yeah. You have to keep those relationships going. So now we'll go into a little bit more detail, and I'll show you what I was talking about <clears throat> earlier. Uh-huh. Right? So phase one is advertising and prospecting. True. Okay. Phase two, building credibility and closing. Phase three, resales, recaptures, and referrals. Now, this is what most people do, is they spend 80% of their marketing budget or more, some people do 100%, Mm -hmm. on advertising and prospecting. And then they only spend 20% on between phase two and phase three, and that includes visits to prospects, building credibility and closing, a newsletter, you know, things to keep people engaged during the sales process, uh, a drip marketing campaign, other kinds of things, podcast. Those are all ways of, of doing a phase two. And phase three, resales, recaptures, and referrals, Uh, That includes happy customer interviews and surveys, any training that you do uh, about your product or service after the fact, service calls, other kinds of things that you do after the fact to make sure that people stay happy and content Exactly. and uh, pleased with your service. So we're going to put a big X through all of that and say, this is how you should do it. Now, of course, if you're a brand new company and you don't have any existing customers, uh, then you're going to have to build up to this. Right. 
Uh, and everybody's formula is going to be a little bit different depending on their market, their customers, their situation, their cash flow, all of those things. But this is what I would consider a healthy balance, right? Mm -hmm. About a 30-30-30 split. So you're going to spend about 30% of your marketing budget on advertising and prospecting, about 30% on building credibility and closing with people who you've made contact with and uh, but are have not yet closed business with, right? And then 30% after you've made that sale to get the next sale, right? On any given month, that may vary, but uh, over the course of a year or more, it should be roughly that. Exactly. And people say, well, you know, my customers only buy from me once. But I'll tell you, if you look at it in a long enough perspective, they probably do buy from you more than once. In fact, some of our brokers that have been in business for a long time can calculate people buy a new airplane from us, an upgrade or uh, mm -hmm. an improvement or something like that every three years, four yeah, years. Three to five years. Exactly. So you get a feel for what that is. It might be a really long cycle, but you need to be working on that cycle, right? That's right. Okay. You can't wait till the last minute. Right. Okay. So, and there's a lot of things that you can do in your phase three, but the most effective thing really is those customer satisfaction events, right? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So um, here are some things, three things, three cardinal rules, right, of customer <laughs> appreciation events. One is food. <laughs> <laughs> two is fun and three is mingling opportunities you want your customers to talk to each other we think right yeah and uh, even though it was a large company that did it uh one of the best ones i've been to is the uh, bell helicopter one in disney mm -hmm. world we have a slide about that so oh, we do of course well, we do of course actually we have a couple of slides about that so you get to talk about that um right so you know and then of course the accountants in the room are standing up screaming how much are we going to spend on this? And, you know, the answer is it has to be something that you can afford. This doesn't have to be hugely expensive. No. Uh, you know, it really just needs to be more thought than money put into this process. Uh, so the way you want to do this is figure out what your customer lifetime value is. And the way that you figure out what your customer lifetime value is, is your average transaction value times the average number of transactions. And both of those are going to go up as you get better at this, right. right? But you have to start with where you are. Mm -hmm. Totally understand that. So you want to think about how much, um, and this is something that you can probably figure out from your CRM. If not, you're going to have to get out an Excel spreadsheet and do some work here. But uh, figure out what your average transaction value is, maybe in the last year, the last two years, last three years, whatever gives you a, a good feeling for, for what that is. Uh, and then times the average number of transactions per customer. So you sell something that is a consumable that people buy from you all the time, that increases that. If you sell a subscription or a service that people buy all the time, this might be 12, 24, 36, some number of transactions that's pretty high, right? And if you're Gulfstream, you sell one airplane every five years to the same guy, but mm -hmm. it still works. Yeah. It just takes a longer, number, longer time. Yeah, and <clears throat> one number is going to be larger than the other, you know, depending <clears throat> on your type of business. But this is how you get a pretty good idea of, and this is probably, this number is probably going to be higher than you think it is if you've never done this calculation uh, specifically before. Uh, so then you want to take a percentage of that customer lifetime value and say, how much is it worth to us to increase that number of transactions? right? Mm -hmm. And eventually it's going to increase the transaction value as you build trust with people. But your first objective really is to increase that average number of transactions. Yes. Okay. And that's why uh, phase three is so profitable is because this is much easier. It's all, it's easier to sell someone that's already purchased something from that's you. That's right. Right. Okay. So who do you invite to a um, customer appreciation event? Customers. Customers, that's a pretty obvious answer. Uh, we also advise people to invite a few prospects to this, especially if it's the first couple of ones that you've done. You really do need to get a, a return on investment pretty quickly on this uh, so that you can justify a bigger and better one the next year, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so if you invite a few prospects who haven't made the leap yet but are pretty far down in your pipeline, they've had a, a couple of uh, presentations from you, you're in maybe contract negotiations or whatever, 
uh, you know, people who are familiar with your product and you, you feel like they're, they're pretty good bets as, as prospects, invite them too. And this might be the thing that puts them over the, over the edge, right? It may be. Right. And it's relatively inexpensive if it does that. Exactly. And that uh, <clears throat> just reduces your cost if you can count that as an immediate ROI or a more immediate ROI than uh, waiting for your customers to make a, a second transaction, especially if you've got a long sales cycle. Right. Okay. You also want to invite your team because you want to invite especially your customer service folks, uh, subject matter experts on the product or service, and other folks so that people can m mingle informally mm -hmm. and uh, ask questions and so on. Okay. So what do you get all of these people to do? And how do you get them to come? <laughs> You have to have something kind of fun in order to make this work. And there's a million ideas, and there's um, you can print this slide if you want to. We're not going to read the whole thing, of course. But there's a lot of things that you can do that are maybe out of the box and more or less expensive, right? Yeah, exactly. And we're going to talk about two examples, one that's a large um, event and one that's a small event, uh, so that you have an idea of kind of the bracketing of what you can do, depending on whether you have a large budget or a small budget. But there's a ton of ideas. Um, we actually went go-karting in Salt Lake City. Right. They have got a place in Salt Lake that has electric go-karts. They probably have these in a lot of different places um, that are a lot of fun. And just about anybody can do this. You know, um, kids, grown-ups, old folks, you know, if they want to bring their parents or, you know, whomever, if some of your clients are getting on in years, um, as some of our, uh, some of our, Clients, clients, um, they have kind of an aging demographic, so they're a little careful about what they can do with them. But this is something that anybody can do, is just uh, get in one of these little go-karts and just go zipping around the track, and you just cannot get the smile off your face. It's just so much fun, right? Um, you just say that because you won. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fun for that reason. But, you know, there's a ton of things that you can do for fun, and just about anything that you can think of, you can find a way to make this work. Right. Uh, the main thing is just you want to have everybody together. You want everybody smiling and you want to have food. Right. Sure. OK. So here's an example of a big event. Um, you can talk about this now. <laughs> oh, we're in Disney World. Mm -hmm. Downtown uh, Disney. Downtown Disney at uh, in Orlando area. Mm -hmm. And they actually flew this helicopter in for the presentation. And this is an event by? Bell Helicopter, Bell Textron. Right. And uh, <clears throat> so what they did is they sent us an invitation. Oh, yeah. It was a really nice invitation. First of course, we accepted. Right. Mm -hmm. And they sent a bus to the convention center, so they picked us up, drove us over there. Yes, they did. Right. And then... Served us dinner. Right. Um, they had little tables. They had uh, little tables of six or eight people, maybe. Mm -hmm. And we had, at our table, one of their test pilots, right? Yes, we did. And they had Disney characters, of course, wandering around. Mm -hmm. You can get your picture taken of those. Mm -hmm. Right. And the advantage of these little tables, you know, with six or eight people, and then you had to get up and go uh, to little buffet stations to get food. So that mm -hmm. encouraged a lot of interaction. And it was all outdoors. It was all outdoors at uh, downtown Disney at, at night. night. Mm -hmm. With lights all over the place, and it was just very used sort of a fantasy kind of thing, but it was really nice. Yeah, and you got to talk to a Bell helicopter <clears throat> test pilot. Well, one of the test pilots and also a couple other pilots that worked with them. Mm -hmm. Some and guys them, I used to know. Yeah, and asked them questions. and mm -hmm. uh, So that was really, really <clears throat> compelling. And then they also had these photo ops with uh, their new at the time. Uh, 409, right. 429, I think that is. Yeah, 429 helicopter they had that roped off but they did also give tours of that i think by request and, mm -hmm. and things one or two people at a time boy you know and you think disney is too young for your your crowd not true you had people in suits and all kinds of things taking pictures with mickey and goofy and and with the cinderella stagecoach and we're all just big kids right That's right yeah so anything that you can think of, especially if it involves, sometimes you may want to have families involved as well. If you are someplace where people are likely to want to bring their families, that always increases the value of of the outing because people will remember that with some positive memories with their kids or their parents or whatever and 
having a, a really good time, right? Absolutely. Right. So that was a really good big event, big budget, big um, big everything, all VIP all the way, right? Now, on the other end of the scale. On the other end of the scale. This is our event. Of course, we're a much smaller company, uh, and we have to do what's in our budget. We're selling services of various values, so our customer lifetime value and our transaction amount is less than that of, of Bell Bell Helicopters. Helicopters, exactly. But we still want to recognize people and having a small event is really cool in its own way. Yes, it is. Because when we sit at a table with these folks, and these are our favorite people, these are our clients, Shane Ballman, Casey Dixon, Brian Pilcher, Lillian Tam, uh, John Wenrick, and uh, Catherine Cree. Yes. And these are some of our favorite people. They are brilliant. And so if you sit them down at a table together, they are going to talk aviation and it's going to be a fantastic time. And all we have to do is feed them. (laughs) <laughs> right? Right. So, you know, and this was just an hour. It was a kickoff breakfast before NBAA. We always do one the first day of NBAA and have a kickoff breakfast with our, our clients. And what it does is it kind of gives us a nice, warm, friendly start to the convention uh, and also kind of gives us an establishing shot of who's here mm-hmm. and uh, who we need to see and what's going on. And everybody's giving everybody ideas and leads and thoughts and, you know, catching up and really warming up that relationship because a lot of our our clients work together on things during the year and in our Facebook group they'll exchange ideas and so forth and it is so much easier to exchange ideas with people that you've shaken the hand of and had breakfast with, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah, so this is one of our very favorite things to do is that breakfast, um, that NBAA kickoff networking breakfast for for ABCI insiders Uh, and that's the opposite end of the scale. So you don't have to do something fancy but you do have to do something, right? right? Just Even to get the, people together. Right, absolutely. <clears throat> and those conventions are often a really good opportunity. Everybody's already there. Everybody's already there. It's really hard to get their time. So you have to do something that's worth their time. In this case, it's just being at a table with a bunch of brilliant people uh, makes it worth it. But uh, uh, whatever you do, you want to make it very much worth it. And you want to make sure that it's commensurate with your customer lifetime value so that it all works. Okay. So if you want to talk about this um, or anything else having to do with sales or marketing, just click the Let's Talk button in the lower left-hand corner of our website or give us a call at 702-987-1679 and we will set up an appointment for a free consultation and uh, talk about whatever is bothering you from a sales sales and marketing perspective. So thanks for visiting with us today and we'll see you next week. Have a great day.